Today I'm going to be talking about setbacks, something that OCD sufferers know all too well, and particularly anxiety sufferers in general and those suffering with insomnia. Setbacks, what happens there? Well, basically what happens is you've been doing well, so you haven't felt that sort of triggered response of OCD, anxiety, uh, any of that. And with insomnia, just fear of not being able to sleep, that kind of situation, they're getting latched. Um, now, what happens is you've been going along fine, you've been feeling calm, you've been quite confident over the things that scared you. Uh, so you're feeling like, hey, I'm not doing too bad. And, and that can feel like, oh my God, I'm never going to be stuck ever again. I'm going to be fine for the rest of my life. Nothing's ever going to bother me ever again. And it can go like that. And then when you get triggered, it can feel like my whole life's over. I'm completely stuck. I never improved. I was kidding myself before. It does all that stuff. It's very, very sneaky like that. So what actually happens there? Well, when you're going along and nothing's got a grip, you get confident in your internal state. You get confident in how you're feeling. So then what happens is you think, oh, well, I can't feel myself being triggered. Let's have a look. Let's venture into my mind. No, nothing too triggering, whatever. And then you, you get confident. Um, but then what happens is, say, for example, a fear that's being lay, laying dormant, maybe one from the past that hasn't got a hold for a while, hasn't got a grip, right? That fear suddenly finds something, OCD is sort of lurking in the background, and it finds a way to get in to latch to grip, and then it does so. And then in that instant, you become utterly convinced, oh my God, I'm locked, uh, I was kidding myself because obviously that was there, but I hadn't noticed it. And so you get back into that sort of cycle. And then you can panic and think, oh my God, I've learned nothing. Oh my God, I've done so much work. How am I like this? It's so easy to do that. That's why it's so easy to feel disheartened and sort of lose hope. OK, now that's the same with insomnia in the sense you can have so many nights where you're like, I'm sleeping fine. I'll never get stuck again. And then like suddenly work says, oh, we've got a work due coming up at 9 a.m. You've got to attend this thing. And then you're like, oh, my God, what if I don't sleep well, then I'll be tired, lethargic at that and won't perform well. Boom, it comes in. And then you think, shit, um, I thought I was over this. And then it all feels like it's reared its head again. You've got stuck again. And then you start to just not feel great about this whole situation because you think, oh, if I'm having bad nights, maybe I'll have two, three, four bad nights. And then you get scared because you think, well, if I could just easily have bad nights again, just like this, then what's not to say that this just keeps happening again and it stay like this for the rest of my life, which is the initial fear at the beginning when you first develop insomnia. You think I'm never, ever going to sleep again. My whole life's going to fall apart which isn't reality, but can feel very much so like that initially, especially when it's sort of become more chronic as it was for me for many, many months, where I didn't understand that I was fulfilling the cycle with fear of fear, fear of being stuck, fear of never sleeping again, fear of my life being in that position endlessly. Um, and that's the same with GAD, chronic anxiety and OCD, fear of being stuck, fear of being chronically guilty, fear of never getting out of that cycle and it just continuing. So with setbacks, that what happens. And Setbacks can come in any way. They can just be you thinking about something and then an old memory OCD latches onto. It can be just thinking, hey, I'm doing pretty well at the moment. I haven't felt anxious for a while. I think I'm completely over this. I don't think I'm ever going to get stuck again. And then in that moment, because you're so, so happy with your great time at the moment, like you've been like, oh, for the last few weeks or months, I've been doing well. Then it's like, comes in and sort of hits you with, oh my God, I really don't want to lose this because of the control. I really don't want to lose how good, how well I'm doing at the moment. And then it comes in, right? Because you're trying to protect, internally protect and control the current state. And when you do that, you're setting off the alarm to this state must not be damaged. This state must not go wrong. And then starts the cycle, right? Whenever we're trying to come in with internal control, like maybe with, um, getting OCD understood. I must understand this perfectly. I must understand acceptance perfectly. I must have Rob understand my OCD perfectly for him to understand how to help me recover. I must get my um, family to understand it perfectly. I must remember everything about my OCD perfectly. Only then can I get over it. Only then can all of this stuff be behind me, right? And that's very much what can happen with this, that self-fulfilling cycle as we go for internal control fast. Have I got internal control? Have I, have I, am I, as the state, been held and maintained long term? Because that's what we're doing. We're looking to maintain the internal state that we currently feel without having anything disrupt it, 
setback, etc. So you've got to roll with setbacks. You've got to expect them to come. You've got to expect that you will experience them. You've got to expect that they're part of the roller coaster like journey of the OCD recovery journey. Going along with them one step at a time, bit by bit, not reacting suddenly, oh my life's over. Instead, going, let's see, let's see how I am in a few 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 hours, in a few days, a few weeks, and then bit by bit by bit, you that that pattern of the roller coaster, the dip, the peaks and troughs level out. But sometimes you can experience a big trough suddenly out of nowhere and then feel over it very quickly. And then you, you sort of you've got to just try and level that out a bit more so that you're not trying to react so suddenly to emotional change. Uh, and that's key because the goal to OCD recovery is learning to be in a more peaceful state longer term, more balanced. When you think of, a, let's say, a political leader uh, or you think of a, a someone who's running a large company or you think of an athlete, think of all the dramas and the problems that come up all the time in their life and they adjust and adapt to that on the spot without like throwing their whole life off one direction or the other. And that's the goal of recovery. So riding with those setbacks, feeling and experiencing them, acknowledging that those are a key part of the recovery journey. And you're just have, going to have to go through these and experience these on the path.